Hello all and welcome to another day of Everyday Black History, where we celebrate the historical achievements and contributions of black men and women, both past and present. Now we always um, uh, show appreciation to scientists, inventors, and today we're going to highlight someone who is a pioneer in the medical field, a neurosurgeon in fact, a brother by the name of Keith Black. Now just a little history on Keith Black, he was born in Tuskegee, Alabama, the son of Lillian, a teacher, and Robert, who was the principal at a racially segregated elementary school in Auburn, Alabama. His father, Robert, who was the principal, was prohibited by law to integrate the school body, so instead he integrated the faculty, raised standards, and brought more challenging subjects to the school. Now later, the family moved to Ohio, where Keith Black attended Sugar Heights High School. And there, having an, in, an interest in medicine, already showing an interest in medicine, Keith Black was admitted to an apprenticeship program for minority students at Case Western Reserve University, and then became a teenage lab assistant for Frederick Cross and Richard Jones, who were the inventors of the Cross-Jones artificial heart valve at St. Luke's Hospital in Cleveland. At the young age of 17, he won an award in a national science competition for research on the damage done at on the damage done to red blood cells in patients with heart valve replacements. He then attended University of Michigan in a program that allowed him to earn both his undergraduate degree and his medical degree in six years. He received his medical degree from the University of Michigan Medical School in 1981. After serving his internship and residency at the University of Michigan, in 1987, he moved to the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles, where he later became head of UCLA's Comprehensive Brain Tumor Program. In 1997, after 10 years at UCLA, he moved to Cedars Sinai Medical Center to head the Maxine Dunitz, Dunitz Neurosur Neurosurgical Institute. He was also on the faculty of the University of California Irvine School of Medicine from 1998 to 2003. In 2007, he opened the new Johnny L. Cochran Jr. Brain Tumor Center at Cedars Sinai, a research center named after the famous lawyer, who we all know, who had been Keith Black's patient and supporter. Keith Black was also a frequent subject of media reports on medical advances and neurosurgery. He was also featured in a 1996 episode of the PBS program, The New Explorers, entitled Outsmarting the Brain. Esquire included him in its November 1999 genius issue as one of the 21 most important people of the 21st century. He has also been cited as an expert in reports about whether cell phone use can cause brain tumors. Now, Dr. Keith Black is also noted for his very busy surgery schedule. A 2004 article in the Discover magazine noted that he performs about 250 brain surgeries per year and that at that time, at the age of 46, he had already performed more than 4,000 brain surgeries, which was the medical equivalent of, of closing in on baseball's all-time career hits record. Now you can imagine, um, in 2018, how many thousands of more surgeries he's performed and how many more lives he saved. In 1997, Time magazine featuring uh, Dr. Keith Black on the cover of a special edition called Heroes of Medicine uh, talked about his reputation as a surgeon who would operate on tumors that other doctors would not. It also talked about aspects of his medical research, including his discovery that the peptide bradykinin can be effective in opening the blood-brain barrier. Now, I don't know what that is, and I don't know what that means, but the fact that he was able to come up with this discovery shows just how um, forward-thinking he was and how much he's contributed to black culture and black history, being, a, being an example to future um, young black men and women who want to get into the neurosurgery field. They have Keith Black, Dr. Keith Black, excuse me, as an example. So Dr. Keith Black, we thank you for your contribution. That concludes this episode of Everyday Black History. We ask you to continue to tune in as we'll be highlighting uh, people and institutions on a daily basis and how they contributed to black history and black culture. So, take, so stay tuned.